Welcome to the Jolly Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Barrett. This podcast is for those who are interested in the conversation around diversity, inclusion, and equity. Each week, I'll be interviewing a guest who has something special to share or is actively part of building solutions in this space. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. This week, I just wanted to take a moment to highlight a few thoughts. I had the recent opportunity to attend the NAACP California Hawaii State Conference led by President Rick Callender, and it was an outstanding event. So I just wanted to highlight a few things for you. Uh, We had representatives from different groups really helping us understand the propositions Uh, an outstanding discussion on reparations by representatives of the Reparations Task Force in California. Uh, And California is the first state to have formed a reparations committee thus far, although there are nearly a dozen other cities that have said they will provide reparations. Um, So I wanted to just talk a little bit about the reparations uh, panel Uh, Because the panel consisted of Camila Moore, Reverend Amos Brown from the California Reparations Committee and the California Task Force to study and develop reparations, along with Tiffany Quarles from the Coalition for a Just and Equitable California. So no matter what your view is of reparations right now, I would encourage you to learn more about what they're doing and what they are uh, uncovering. And really, I'll talk a minute about a study that they released um, that I was not aware of, so maybe you are not either. Um, But their work has really demystified the myth that California was a free state. Um, So their research uncovered more than 1,500 slaves in California, and that was just between 1850 and 1852. Um, And then there was the implementation of a fugitive slave law uh, that was more aggressive. So on June 1st of 2022, just a few months ago, the task force to study and develop reparation proposals for African-Americans issued its interim report to the California legislature. And the interim report surveys the ongoing and compounding harms experienced by African-Americans as a result of slavery and the lingering effects on American society today. It includes a set of preliminary recommendations for policies that the California legislature could adopt to remedy those those harms, but um, they will be doing, issuing another report before July 1st of 2023 And that plan will comport with international standards for reparation. They also uh, discussed some perspectives on how to determine who's eligible. Um, That's certainly, I think, a question that lots of folks are asking. But it will seek to align those recommendations. And they talked about how America needs AAA, which um, uh, was focused on admit a tone, and action. So if you have a moment, please take a moment to go to oag.ca.gov and search for reparations to get more information, download the interim report. And I would just say, you know, spend some time with it, read it, um, understand our true history. Um, It was an eye opener for me, certainly. And um, hopefully it will open your eyes a bit as well um, if you haven't been following uh, the Reparations Committee and Task Force. Um, The other thing is that we had an economic development panel discussion led by President Bobby Bivens of the Stockton branch of the NAACP, which also included uh, Mario Holton from Wells Fargo, Danetta Jackson from the California Department of General Services, and Miss Click, I'm, and I'm sorry I cannot recall her first name, um, but Miss Click and Miss Jackson really discussed the statewide supplier diversity certification program 
and the process to get certified if you are a small business uh, in California. So I would encourage if you have a small business to take a look at that because it sounds like the process has been streamlined. We also heard from Ben Crump, who uh, attended the youth dinner, uh, really focused on ensuring that we remember the history, protect the present, and focus on the future, and gave us some some great information throughout that dinner. We had another panel focused on fighting discrimination through tech, moderated by Yvonne Thomas from the NAACP Monterey County, along with Trevon Williams, who is the Senior Vice President for the NAACP, and Yanad Burrell, I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, Yanad, um, from Glasshouse Public Relations. Um, and it was really an excellent discussion on how to be successful in achieving your goals to combat hate, racism, discrimination, using technology. Many of you will note uh, the NAACP campaigns, Black Women Are Supreme, We Are Done Dying, This Is Power, just phenomenal communications work being done at the national level. And then we also, I did go to a panel on veterans affairs that was focused on non-combat PTSD. Um, And it was a panel led by Antoinisha Williamson, but it also included Malachi Smith and James Smith II, along with David Baryu. And the first part consisted of a focus on how to help us advocate for our veteran community by connecting them with the right resources and specialized veteran advocates within our communities. And we had a great presentation by by Mr. Malachi Smith. Um, But then I learned of a practice uh, around deporting veterans, which um, I wasn't aware. So maybe some of you aren't either. But the United States government has been deporting United States military service men and women since 1996 at an unprecedented rate. The effects of these deportations began to find notice around 2008 in Tijuana, Mexico, where a group of deported veterans gathered together to support one another. And as their profiles raised, dignitaries and supporters visited the groups in Tijuana and Juarez and expressed their indignations to their constituents. Unfortunately, those that were not geographically located next to the U.S. borders were primarily ignored and included in the vast group of those that identify as Black or African American. And so there is, the Biden administration has provided a plan called IMMVI, which stands for Immigrant Military Member and Veteran Initiative. I think what I got from that panel is uh, that this appears to be a kind of more like a Band-Aid on a bullet hole. And that was James' quote, I should say. Um, And so uh, it sounds like we really do need some political support to demand Congress address the issue and repatriate our exiled warriors um, so that we can right this wrong. They literally served our country and are then being deported um, to their country of origin. So it was a very interesting conversation. I hope to get more information um, and maybe even have James come on to the podcast and talk a little bit more about it. Um, but anyway, uh, I wanted to just kind of highlight that I hadn't heard about it before, but it was uh, James Smith runs a support group called Black Deported Veterans of America. And so if you want more information on that, feel free to check that out. Um, And then finally, I just want to congratulate the Stockton branch of the NAACP on the recent Thalheimer Award that was received back in June by President Derek Johnson, uh, presented to President Bobby Bivens. And uh, in at this conference, uh, President Bobby Bivens was presented with the President's Award by State Conference President Rick Callender 
along with first Vice President Deadria Davey, was also awarded the Gwen Moore Advocacy Award. And the Gwen Moore Advocacy Award is presented to a member who speaks up on behalf of an issue, person, or injustice. And it was given to Deadria Davey, who is our first vice president of the Stockton branch. Um, and she recently completed a resolution regarding home ownership that has now made it to on the national agenda. So um, I just want to congratulate those individuals for the work that they are doing and just make sure that people are out there doing what they can to create equity. So before I leave, if you are not registered to vote, please register to vote. If you are registered to vote, please take the time to vote and take the time to review the candidates in your local community, as well as the county, state, and federal level. If you're not registered to vote, please register. If you are registered to vote, please vote. Literally, our lives depend on it. See you next week. Thanks for joining me on the Jolly Podcast. Please subscribe so you won't miss an episode. See you next week.